Hi guys, I'm Michaela and you're watching Book Envy. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Today I'm doing a book review. You may have noticed that I like doing those. And right now we are going to be discussing What Belongs to You by Garth Greenwell. This was originally a novella that Greenwell expanded into his debut novel. It sits at a little under 200 pages, so it's not very lengthy, but let me tell you, though she be but little, she is fierce. We follow our humble narrator, from the United States to Bulgaria, where he resides as an English teacher who develops a torrid infatuation with a prostitute he meets in a public restroom. As the story progresses, the narrator divulges more information about his upbringing and his past, and we watch how that intertwines with his unhealthy connection to Mitko, the prostitute. While longing for someone you can't have is far from an original concept, what Greenwell manages to do is craft his story with a vulnerability that sucker punches you. What Belongs to You is a portrait of everything below the surface, what we crave, what's broken us, who we are and who we become when we're lonely and we feel disconnected from everyone around us. I'd like to dive into what I consider an ocean full of positives because there's so many aspects that I really enjoyed or I really admired. The first thing that I would like to discuss is the importance of it, that this novel exists. Stories like What Belongs to You are a very crucial part of the fabric that makes up the human experience. It's a story that demands to be felt and it is a story that demands to be heard. It's really imperative that we shed light on LGBT fiction, to which your response may be, well, yeah, no shit, Michaela, but allow me to expound. Garth Greenwell is 10 years older than me. He was born in 1978. A majority of my friends who are gay are probably about 20 years older than me. In fact, one of my best friends in the entire world uh, just turned 47. It matters to me that LGBT narratives don't leave the previous generations behind. I love what belongs to you, not just because it's LGBT fiction that's written beautifully, but also because it's a snapshot what it's like to be gay from that generation. I just really hope that there will still be an emergence of even more writers that are Generation X or the start of being a millennial or even actually even older than that would be even more awesome. But those voices matter too. So it really, you know, it's really touching for me. The second thing that I really loved about What Belongs to You is how relatable it is. It is tremendously relatable. More people than not have experienced longing for someone who they couldn't have or who was bad for them. We've all been there. My favorite TV romance right now is Connor and Oliver from How to Get Away with Murder. Even though they're two gay men, as I'm watching them, there's an authenticity to their relationship that I, I, I don't see everywhere else. And it's the same kind of authenticity that that is present in what belongs to you. You feel like these are real people and their shame is your shame and you know their heartbreak and, and everything that they go through, you feel, you feel so connected to it. Oh, and the characters. You know how sometimes when you're really engrossed in a book, you feel like you're watching a movie in your head? This was so much more personal. It didn't feel like I was watching a movie. It felt like I was a voyeur. I felt like I was either watching this happen and it was like something that I wasn't supposed to see, but I was watching it anyway, or it was, you know, at a bar or something, and somebody who's had a little too much to drink is telling me entirely too much, which has also happened to me. In a weird way though, I, I could see these characters so well and I actually pictured them as actors. Now our humble narrator who shall remain nameless, mainly because it's told in the first person and there's absolutely no link to his real name or identity. The narrator I actually pictured as the actor Michael Pitt. He was in a Gus Van Sant movie and he was also in um, Bernardo Bertolucci's The Dreamers. I think that came out in like the early 2000s. And then the character of Mitko this really like tragically flawed that the narrator falls in love with. I could almost either picture him as Ed Westwick from Gossip Girl or almost like a really, really young Joaquin Phoenix. Now the writing is something I'm going to cover again in my negatives, but for right now we're still, we're still in the positives. The narration was absolutely seamless. You never doubted that the person telling the story 
knew everything, had all the dirt, all the details. It's actually like portions of it where you felt like not only did they know the whole story, there were also things that they knew but they weren't going to tell you. There's a sense of mastery and, and someone completely owning their story, which I found absolutely irresistible. So now I'm gonna get into the negatives a little bit. You really have to be in the mood for something heavy. It's very poetic, but it's also very dense. And if you were not in the frame of mind to welcome that with open arms, I can see very easily how what we what we call poetic prose would come across as very tedious. Which leads me to my next point. There is a noticeable absence of humor in what belongs to you, and you cannot escape the vortex. Apparently jokes weren't allowed, I guess. And before you hate on me, let me just say, I am keeping it real. If I am going to call out why a for struggling to use five letter words, even though it's intended for a younger demographic, best believe that I'm going to call out literary fiction when I think it's taking itself too seriously. Much as I loved it and enjoyed it, there are times when this novel gets stuffy and you use it to fan yourself. It does get pretentious. Garth Greenwell graduated from Harvard at times. It feels like he's pandering to that crowd. Overall, I felt the writing was very beautiful, and I felt that the sentences were beautifully crafted, but there were still parts of the writing that did not work for me. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on, from the moment we meet Mitko, he smells of alcohol. Now, I don't know about you, but I, for one, am no stranger to the libations. In addition to that, I was also a bartender, so I have seen my fair share of public intoxication. I have also contributed to it. So, Mitko, like I said, from the, the second we meet him, this kid's like reeking of booze. He's like messy, and who knows when he showered last. So, then we come to page 10. I want more, but he didn't relent. He smiled at me and motioned me back still courteous as he put on the shirt he had hung so carefully behind him. I watched him helplessly, still kneeling, as he called out to his friend, whom he called again and who called back to him from the outer chamber. Maybe he saw that I was angry and wanted to remind me he wasn't alone. Straightening his clothes, running his hands down his torso to settle them properly on his frame, he smiled without guile, as if maybe he did feel he had given me what he owed. Very difficult for me to picture somebody with a blood alcohol level of like 0 0.24 carefully folding a shirt behind him and, and whenever he goes to get dressed, he's smoothing out his attire. It just did not seem very believable to me that the mostly homeless prostitute who has basically made a public restroom his street corner is like, you know, taking a fucking lint roller to himself after sex. I'm sorry. As much as I pride Garth Greenwell on being very authentic with his characters and his characters coming from an authentic place, it was just a small detail that took me out of the story. I guess it's almost like a bullshit detector a little bit, not saying that like it didn't happen or it couldn't happen, but it just didn't really seem to fit and that's all I'm trying to say. Now I'm gonna switch gears and talk about um, some of the writing that did work for me. I don't know why I cringed at her stories when I had done so much worse at her age, having sex in parks and bathrooms, dangerous and indiscriminate sex. But I was troubled that her history seemed to parallel my own, that we shared what I thought of as my own gnawing affliction. And I knew that she would outgrow the satisfactions she had found, that soon she would desire other and more intense experiences drawn forward by those appetites we share, that humiliating need that is always, even in my moments of apparent pride, run alongside my life like a snapping dog. Several pages on, he makes another reference to dogs, which I found interesting. It was like a land of ravens, if that's what they were, of ravens and of dogs, which are everywhere in Sophia, but were rougher and more numerous here. They were battered, vicious things, more desperate than the dogs where I lived. Most were muscular and medium-sized, with bullish features and square jaws, solid dogs with a brutal elegance that appealed to me, as did their short coats, mottled and tawny. So as they slept, they looked like fawns curled in the unmown grasses. But I think it is kind of important to know the pattern that's developing with dogs as some kind of metaphor for the relationship that he has with Mitko because 
I do think that there's some interesting parallels for the story and what it is that he's trying to communicate to the reader. In conclusion, What Belongs to You by Garth Greenwell. I'm happy I read it. If anything, it definitely encourages me to want to read anything else that Garth Greenwell would write or publish. I think this is a commendable debut. I adore his contribution to literature and to LGBT fiction. The writing is absolutely fantastic. It definitely has its moments where you know, it crosses the line into being pretentious. But even still, that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy it. It's just me looking at it ultimately for what it is. It's also a very fresh take on a literary concept we're all too familiar with. What belongs to you? Is that a question or is that a statement? While it's certainly subjective, one thing that is not in the New York Times book review on the cover, this novel is an instant classic to be savored by all lovers of serious fiction. Please let me know your thoughts down below if you've read this novel. Um, also, if you would like to make other suggestions to me for other LGBT books, what are some of your favorites? Not necessarily even literary fiction, but just any LGBT books that you think I should be reading. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed the book, both reading it and reviewing it. So take care until next time and happy reading. I'll see you guys later.